Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin and welcome back to my channel. So every year for October I like to do something for Halloween. Last year I ranked 30 Disney Channel episodes and the year before that I ranked all of the Halloween decoms. But this year I wanted to do something different, something that was new to me. And I've gotten a lot of requests before to rank all of the Monster High movies and so that's what we're doing today. First of all I just wanted to make it very clear that I am a Monster High newbie. Monster High was a little bit after my time and so I've never seen the movies, I've never seen the web series, I never owned any of the dolls. And so I have no pre-existing nostalgia attached to this brand and so I'm kind of Going to be brutally honest with this video but I will say that after watching all these movies I have found a real love for this franchise and I will admit that I have been looking at some of the dolls on eBay and so I guess you could say they have converted me into a fan everything I'm going to be saying in this video I am saying with love I really enjoy these movies and I had a good time watching them and so I'm ranking all 15 of these movies not all of them are full-length movies some of them are only like 20 or 40 minutes but I felt like 15 was a great number and so I'm like let's just include them all and so with all that being said let's just jump right into it <laughs> Dad, I have a tail. Oh, you crazy kids these days and your fans. <laughs> Why do you do it? <laughs> How do you do it? <laughs> Why don't know? <sighs> So at number 15, I have Great Scarier Reef. This one focuses on Laguna. We find out that she's a really good dancer in this movie, but she can't like perform because she has really bad stage fright. And so to conquer her stage fright, she has to go and look the Kraken in the eye because if she can do that, then she can do anything. Um, oh, also they all turn into mermaids in this movie because they wanted to sell mermaid dolls. <laughs> I just personally feel like the concept of this movie was really dumb. Like it's clear to me that they just wanted to make a mermaid movie without really caring about what the movie was actually about, which resulted in a pretty boring movie that just had me annoyed the whole time and just thinking back to this movie makes me so upset because this was like the only movie that really focused on Laguna and she's one of my favorite characters in like the main seven of them and so the fact that this was the movie that she got just makes me mad because she deserves so much better also the twist at the end I saw coming right away and so that didn't really do anything for me in terms of like saving the movie and just overall I felt like it was really lazy storytelling like to make a whole movie about a girl's stage fright like that seems like a 20 minute TV episode plot not like a 70 minute long movie plot and so yeah yeah, I just really didn't like this movie. I found it to be really boring and yeah, I didn't enjoy it. So let's move on. <clears throat> Any questions? Coming in at number 14, we have Monster High Electrified. This is the second movie in the reboot series. It's also the last Monster High movie. So I guess that the reboot series did not do so well. It's hard for me to summarize what this movie is about just because I feel like there was a lot going on, but also not at the same time. Basically, Frankie gets struck by lightning while protecting Twyla because they're in love. And then this causes her to harbor more electricity in her body, which gives her the ability to create glowing designs on clothing. And this is a good thing because they're currently working on opening a salon for Monsters and Humans, which includes clothing designing for some reason. I don't know, Claudine was a fashion designer and so they tried to tie that in even though it doesn't really make sense. But at the same time that all of this is happening, Monica, who if you haven't seen the reboot series, she's basically Gulia's replacement and also the villain. And so while they're trying to open the salon, she is plotting against them with her zombie army because she does not like the normies. But get this, her main plan is to just cut off all the lights in the human world because the humans are afraid of the dark. Just what a genius. Oh, there's also this whole subplot where like a group of characters were making this band and every time it cut to it, I was like, oh, we're back to this again. Overall, this movie was just really disappointing to me because I actually enjoyed the first one in the reboot series and I felt like this one had a lot of potential, but it just wasn't good. It was really slow and I was just annoyed by the characters the whole time because they were honestly really dumb. Like there was one part where Twyla tells Frankie that she doesn't like being in crowds and then Frankie immediately brings her into a crowd and then when she disappears, she's like, oh, you know what we should do? Throw her a party. And I'm like, what? This girl just told you she doesn't like crowds and you're like, let's throw her a party? That makes no sense. And then Twyla was kidnapped by Monica at one point and then she decides to like release her for no reason in hopes that she'll lead Frankie back to her and that's exactly what she does. I just felt like Twyla was so much smarter than that to be like, I'm not too sure why Monica released me, but I'm gonna lead you back to the place that she was holding me captive and we're not gonna tell anybody where we're going and we're not gonna bring anybody else with us, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Like, no, Twyla's way smarter than that. Oh, there was also this flying creature called Snap that Frankie was just able to create after she was struck by lightning so I guess it wasn't just fashion designing she could also create life so I guess that's cool so yeah I didn't like this movie it was definitely a low point to end on as it is the last movie in the series but I will say that it did give us a lot of great Frankie and Twyla moments they're very much in love and I definitely ship them after watching this movie 
grown. I'm a zombie, I guess. Ditto! So number 13, we have Monster High Freaky Fusion, and I don't know what it is about this movie, but I hated it. Basically, all the monsters at school are working on their heritage projects, which leads the main group of girls to finding this time machine, and then they go back in time for a bit, but actually, wait, no, I have to go back a bit because I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Before that, we meet these new group of monsters that are introduced to Monster High. They are hybrid monsters, so instead of, like, your ghost and your mermaid monster, you'll have a ghost mermaid monster. So it's all to, like, show that, like, different species of monsters in the Monster High universe can procreate with one another to create hybrid monsters. And so these new hybrid monsters are having a really hard time at Monster High because all of these other monsters are bullying them and being really racist towards them. Which is actually a very common theme in the Monster High series. A lot of these movies deal with prejudice and racism. I just don't think it was handled in the best way here. But back to the time machine thing. So the time portal is about to close, which leads some of the girls to jump in last minute, which results in them fusing with one another to create their own sort of hybrid monsters. And I understand what they were trying to do here. Like, first of all, obviously they were trying to sell hybrid monster dolls. But second of all, I think that they were trying to do the whole, like, you gotta walk in their shoes sort of thing to understand what it's like. But here's the thing. These girls, like our main Monster High girls, weren't the ones that were bullying the hybrid monsters. Like, they were good. They didn't need to be taught this lesson. So I'm like, What's the point of this? And it's not just like they gave these girls another ability that they had to learn how to control. Like, they fused them with another person. If I got fused with, like, my best friend, I wouldn't be trying to figure out how to, like, work together and harness our abilities as one. I'd be trying to figure out how to get my body back. But all of that weirdness aside, I just personally feel like the movie was trying to do way too much. We had the time travel thing, we had the fusion thing, and we also had this whole thing where we were trying to figure out what was up with Frankie's past. And I just feel like all of that together really made the movie feel like a big mess. Also, I really didn't like Frankie and Nate at all. I definitely preferred her with Andy, if that's not a weird thing to ship. I'm not too sure what the like age difference was there, but I feel like they made it like seem like a normal thing. So I don't know, I just felt like their story was developed a lot better than hers and the unicorn zombie guy I believe that's what he was um yeah I didn't like them together and I didn't like this movie and so yeah that's why it's number what is it 13 something like that <laughs> So at number 12, we have Monster High Ghoul's Rule, and I did not hate this movie, like Freaky Fusion. I just found it to be a little bit slow, and so that's why I have it just a little bit farther back on the list. But I feel like the main reason why I probably felt like it was a little bit on the slower side is because this was the first movie that was 70 minutes long. All the movies that came before this were only 46 minutes or less, which honestly, I felt like was maybe the better length for some of these movies. I often felt that while watching some of the longer movies that the storylines would drag on near the end and that the storylines could have been condensed. But back to Ghoul's Rule, this is another one that deals with racism and prejudice, but this time it's with the monsters versus the humans. It's Halloween time and the normies are playing pranks on the Monster High School, and then when similar pranks show up at the normie school, the monsters get blamed for it, and so they gotta go and prove their innocence. And I wish I had more to say about this movie because I hate when I'm just like, oh, it was boring and that's it. But honestly, it was boring and that's it. I will say though, I did like how there was more of a focus on Jackson in this movie because I thought that his character was really interesting. He was the son of Jekyll and Hyde. And so it was cool to see him expanded on a bit more in this movie. There was also some pretty good ships. Abby and Heath had some cute moments, like she saved him in the beginning and then they kind of get together near the end, which was really cute. I also loved Claire. She was the goth human, but I just thought that she was so cool and I really want a doll of her. And then her and Jackson were really cute. They kiss at the end and I was just like all about it. They also did the whole Radio Rebel thing at the end where everyone was like, I'm a monster. No, I'm a monster. And so, yep, that was fun. Hey, Halloween, it's Deuce. Um, I was told I had to go to tomorrow night's party with you or else I would be expelled. So pick you up at eight. Coming in at number 11 is 13 Wishes. This is another one that I feel like could have been better if it had a shorter runtime. Basically, Claudine's little sister, Howleen, discovers this magical lamp. It grants her 13 wishes and then chaos ensues. I just felt like this movie started out really strong, like the intro was so well done, but then the movie kind of fell short near the end and really lost me halfway through. I also just hated seeing Laguna and Gil's relationship on the rocks in this movie, especially because you could tell where that plotline was gonna go from the moment it was introduced. But I will say that I love Gigi, she's probably one of the main Monster High dolls that I really want, and I really enjoyed their cover of Magic Carpet Ride at the end, that was a lot of fun. I also sort of shipped Howleen and Twyla in this movie, which doesn't interfere of my ship of Twyla and Frankie because that exists in a different universe where Howleen doesn't even exist, and so it all works out. It doesn't matter if you're a vampire, werewolf, or even part normie. Yay! 
So at number 10, I have Monster High Fright On, which was the first sort of full-length Monster High movie with a runtime of 46 minutes. And this movie really reminded me of the Disney Channel movie Zombies because it focuses on the animosity between the vampires and the werewolves in the Monster High universe. There's schools specifically for vampires and schools specifically for werewolves, but Monster High is for everybody. And so this movie follows them merging all of the student bodies into one and everything is working out great until this bad guy comes and wants to ruin everything and make everybody hate each other. And so they got to stop him. And since this movie was made earlier on, it had the older animation, which I just absolutely loved. Like I don't have anything against the 3D animation that they used for the rest of the movies, but there was just something so nostalgic about the 2D animation that they used for the first two movies that I just really enjoyed. I was also introduced to Draculaura and Claude in this movie, and I must say that they are adorable, probably one of my favorite canon ships from the franchise. Their height difference was just everything. I will be honest though, I found this movie to be a little bit forgettable, but I don't think it's bad or anything. I really enjoyed watching it. It's just, yeah, not one of my personal favorites. See? She's the ghoul. So at number nine, I have Why Do Ghouls Fall in Love? And I'll be honest, this is one that I wanted to like a lot more than I did. It centers around Draculaura and Claude. Valentine's Day is coming up, which also means that Draculaura's birthday is coming up and Claude can't seem to find the right gift. And then Valentine, a bad vampire from Draculaura's past, comes back and puts her under a trance and so they have to save her. I just feel like the concept of this movie was really strong. It's about one of my favorite canon ships, but I just didn't love how the story played out. I think that there's definitely better Monster High movies than this one. However, I could still see myself watching this movie for Valentine's Day is to come. Don't eat the paper! So next up we have Welcome to Monster High, which is the first movie in the reboot series, which I feel weird calling a reboot series because it only came like six months after the last Monster High movie, and so I'm like, seems a bit quick to do a reboot series, but whatever. This movie gave the girls all new character designs as well as changed up the animation a bit. It's supposed to be like a whole new origin story, so it follows Draculaura meeting Frankie for the first time, and together they create Monster High. And there's a lot of things that I really like about this movie. I like the new animation style, I like how the characters' powers are explored more, I like how the school is a boarding school and I felt like this movie's story was done pretty well. I enjoyed it when I was watching it but I just can't get over how many characters were rewritten or left out completely like Claude, Howleen, Gulia, and Abby. And I also didn't love the school's new origin story like the fact that the girls created it is a fun concept but I just felt like it took away some of the history that Monster High had and sort of the mystery that came along with it. I also didn't enjoy the whole pop star plot twist thing. I thought that that was really dumb and kind of took away the original message of bringing the two worlds together in the first place. But with all that being said, I did still really enjoy this movie. I thought that the plot line was really strong and I was fairly entertained the whole time. And I wish that we could have gotten more movies in this reboot series because although I didn't like the sequel at all, I still feel like I had a lot of potential, like I mentioned earlier. And so it would have been interesting to see what they would have done next. We tried our best Frankie. Whoa, 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 fang on a second. So next up we have Scaris City of Frights. This one is about the girls going on a trip to Scaris because Claudine has this opportunity to be her favorite fashion designer's apprentice, but then we find out that she is evil. The fashion designer that she loves is actually the villain, and so they gotta stop her. And I feel like this one's good. It's like your typical teen field trip movie, and kind of similar to Why Do Ghouls Fall in Love. I liked this movie, but I didn't love it. Gulia making bank was great. I love seeing that, and we also got a lot of great ship content, which I'm about. I just I just don't think that it is as strong as some of the other movies. Also the short film at the end of this movie was so unnecessary. I don't know if it is included in all versions of this movie but when you buy it on YouTube it is included at the end and so I was watching this movie and I'd already sort of checked out near the end of it and then suddenly Frankie goes, wait don't you want to see how we got home? And I'm just like, no not really. <laughs> and then we went on a 20 minute adventure following around Claudine's design book and I was just, I did not enjoy it. But Scarus was good. I can't fault the movie for its short film so yeah, Scaris, good movie. It's super cute. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? My good. I'm bad. So coming in at number six, we have Monster High New Ghoul in School. This is the first Monster High movie, if you can even call it that, because it is only 20 minutes long. And I feel like this little short film was a really great intro into the series. It almost felt like a TV show pilot, probably because it was only 20 minutes, but either way, I really enjoyed it. It definitely gave me Barbie Diary vibes just because of the narration and the whole like teen drama high school setting, but then it also sort of gave me Victorious vibes, just in the fact that they introduced like the main power couple of the school and then brought in the new girl to sort of like challenge that, but then throughout the rest of the series kind of a abandoned that because they realized that the main power couple is just so much more superior. But overall I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun time and definitely showed the potential that the series had. Yeah. 
So next up we have Monster High Frights Camera Action, and this one dives deeper into the vampire lore of the Monster High universe. Apparently there is this vampire queen and Draculaura is led to believe that that is her until we find out that that is not her and so they go on this adventure to find out who the real vampire queen is. One thing I love about this movie is that it shows the full like vampire tree and it just goes Dracula and then Draculaura. No mom needed. It makes me wonder if in the Monster High universe if monsters can just like procreate on their own because like I don't see why not. I do feel like the title of this movie is a little bit misleading like they make it seem like it's going to be more movie focused than it actually is or maybe that's just me nitpicking but I just felt like it would have made more sense if the whole movie took place in Hauntlywood instead of only like the second half. I was actually really skeptical of this movie at first and I wasn't really too sure why but I ended up really enjoying it. I was so happy that we got to explore the voodoo guy more and that he was like a main character in this movie because he was just hilarious and I loved him. And while the whole twist with the vampire queen was quite obvious, I still loved it because I thought that it was really funny and just done really well. I will say though I didn't really care for the whole like Twilight Ship Wars plotline except for the fact that both of the guys were played by the same guy. I thought that that was genius and I absolutely loved it and now I just desperately want like a movie or a TV show where they have like a love triangle with the main guy being played by the same guy. I think that that would be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to witness the end of Monster High up close. Right, Rock? <laughs> So at number four, I have Monster High Friday Night Frights, and this one I actually had at number two for the longest time when I was ranking these movies, just because I found that this one and the one that came before it to be so strong as a unit. I just felt like they both seemed so cohesive as a series and just had really great storytelling. Obviously, I ended up moving it down on my list just because it is such a simple story. This one is about Monster High's roller derby team, except it's probably not called a roller derby team because it's the Monster High universe and they like to name things differently. Basically, Claude, who is their star player, ends up getting injured, and so they hold tryouts to find a new teammate and Laguna ends up being really good, but all the boys are like, we don't want to play on a team with a girl because roller derby is for boys. And so they all quit the team, which just results in all the girls joining the roller derby team. And it's really great. It was very reminiscent to me of the basketball episode from Soy 101 and also every other sports movie ever because it's just very basic. Like every sports movie trope you can think of, I guarantee is in this movie. Obviously there's roller skating in it. So the minute I saw that I was hooked. I was like, is this Soy Luna? I mean, obviously Soy Luna is quite different because like dancing on skates, not like racing, but still roller skates, I'm in. There were still a couple things that I didn't love about this movie, obviously the sexism being one of them, but that was sort of necessary for the plot and the overall lesson. But also Claude really disappointed me in this movie. I thought that he was better than that, but I guess he did come around by the end of it. So that's what matters. Also, did they really need to wear those like cute roller derby outfits by the end of it? Like I understand they're trying to sell some cute like roller skating dolls, but all the other teams are wearing armor and I don't know, roller derby is a pretty dangerous sport so like maybe put a little bit more padding on I don't know just a thought overall I really enjoyed this movie it's definitely a good one and I would recommend it if you haven't seen it so big I was like whoa and Claude was like Boo. so at number three we have Monster High Escape from Skull Shores and I love this movie so much it was my number one for the longest time the only reason why I did end up moving it down is just because it isn't as long as the other two that I have at number one and two and I don't know I felt like because it is only like 40 minutes it didn't feel as important if that makes sense but I still felt like number three did it just because it is just such a good movie. This one's like your typical teen stranded on a deserted island movie. Basically it's spring break and so like the main core seven are going on a trip and then they end up stranded on a uh, island. <laughs> and I just feel like the storytelling in this movie was so on point and I just loved everything about it. It sort of gave me High Musical 2 vibes in a way. I think probably just because of like spring break but yeah I don't know I really liked it. The villain in this movie is voiced by the same guy that does the English dub for Gregorio in Violetta and also Hawk Moth in Miraculous and so that was a fun treat as well. And I love Andy. He was the best. I thought that his character was so interesting and like I mentioned earlier I loved him and Frankie even though I'm not sure if I was supposed to and I just wish that he wasn't forgotten about as the series went on just because yeah I was really invested in his character. And of course I loved Laguna and Gil. They were so adorable and just I don't know overall I feel like this movie is like what I imagine a monster high movie should be like. Just like a solid high school drama but they're all monsters and it's a fun time and so yeah I really like this movie. It's a lot of fun and I highly recommend it. It's yes. not just about brunch! So coming in at number two, we have Monster High Boo York Boo York, and I just have one word to say, and that is musical. I actually originally had this one placed a lot lower on my list, but every time I think back to it, I would just be like, but it was a musical and it was so much fun and I loved it and so now it's number two. This one follows the gang going to Boo York because Cleo's dad wants her to take over this like Egyptian dynasty thing and then also take over Boo York, I think. <laughs> I'll be honest, the storytelling in this movie isn't the best, 
but the music is and I feel like that makes up for it I also didn't know it was a musical when I first went into it And so I was caught very off guard when they first started like breaking out into song But honestly, they were all bops and I loved them all also the ships in this movie were just great I never really cared much for Cleo and Deuce, but this movie really had me rooting for them But even more so Caddy Noir and Pharaoh were probably my favorite part about this movie I mean, I guess the whole plot twist way before it happened But either way, I thought it was perfect and I loved it I think my only complaint with this movie is that it could have easily been 40 minutes like we had a full-on resolution at the 40 minute mark and we really only needed another five minutes to like tie up some loose ends but then the movie ended up dragging on for another 30 minutes but that's literally my only complaint i loved everything else about this movie every time i think back to it i just have such fond memories and so yep it's number two we're a duo we're not a duo just sit tight we'll figure out what's going on duo so at number one, we have Monster High Haunted, and this is another movie that I was very pleasantly surprised by because it fell in like the watch order after a few that I didn't really love, and so I didn't really have very high expectations going into this movie, but I ended up loving it. This one is about the ghost realm in the Monster High universe. Draculaura is being haunted, which leads to them going to the ghost realm to figure out who's been haunting her, and they end up at the ghost high school where they find out that there's like something fishy going on with the headmaster, and so they gotta put a stop to it. And first of all, I must say that everyone's ghost looks in the ghost realm were everything. I absolutely love them, especially Twyla's and Spectra's. I also just loved all of the new characters in this movie. River definitely became one of my favorite characters after it. She was just so cool, and I love her. And I feel like this movie is one of the few in the Monster High film series that chooses a story to tell that actually fits the time frame. Like I didn't feel like it dragged on or like it wasn't long enough. It just felt perfect. And then also the twist at the end with who was haunting Draculaura and what was going on with the headmaster, I just felt were executed perfectly. This movie also had one of my favorite canon ships which were Spectra and Porter, although sometimes I feel like she didn't really deserve him. Like he did a lot and sacrificed a lot for her and I felt like she never really thanked him properly, but I still feel like they were hella cute and they would definitely be very high up on my Monster High ship list if I were to do a Monster High ship list. So let me know if you guys want me to do that because I can do that. But yeah, overall, I just felt like the concept of this movie was 10 out of 10, the story was 10 out of 10, the characters were 10 out of 10, and the clothing was 10 out of 10, and the movie was 10 out of 10. And so that is why it is my favorite Monster High movie. Let me know down below which Monster High movie is your favorite. I can't wait to read all about it. But with all that being said, let's move on to the ad read, which, trust me, you will definitely want to stick around for. This video is sponsored by the one and only Skillshare, which if you're familiar with my channel, then I'm sure you've heard me talk about Skillshare before. Skillshare is an online learning community where you can go and learn anything from design to film to business, anything you want to learn, Skillshare's got you covered. Now as someone who is a fan of a lot of things, I often say that you should go take a creative writing class and then write me a fanfic because I want more fanfiction to read. But after putting this video together, I was like, you know who should do that? Me. You know, I talk a big talk, but can I walk the walk? Let's find out. So I went and I took Storytelling 101. It was taught by this guy named Daniel. He was great, very charismatic, really enjoyed it. All of this to say that I took what I learned to the test and I wrote a little one shot about my favorite Monster High ship. So if you wanna find out where you can read that, just stay tuned till the end. But first, if Skillshare sounds like something that you'd be interested in, if you wanna take a creative writing class just like I did or any of the other classes that they offer, you click the link in the description down below. The first thousand people that join with my link will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium, which is everything on the platform for free, which is great. And then after that trial expires, it's just under $10 a month annually, so it's a pretty sweet gig. Thank you once again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and to you guys for checking out Skillshare as it really helps out the channel a lot. Now, if you do want to read my one shot, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, whatever. I'll be posting the link on all of my socials, so you can go check it out if you're interested. Anyway, Skater Tots, that's all I have to say for today. I hope you'll have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you very, very soon.